Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optobotomist coming at you again with another Star Trek review. Now, I completely blame JT Mitchell for this. You guys know who JT Mitchell is. He is a little bum. And he has got me reinterested in these, to say the least. So here we have the, the Art Asylum, um, or Diamond Select, I think they're the same company, Enterprise E. Now this is a beautiful, beautiful representation of the way the ship looked and how it even sounded. Now, I'm pulling up my laptop here so you might see because there's a lot of information that I, I've been choosing to share with you guys about this. And you might have heard a fire truck. That's not me. Now, the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701E, is, of course, a Sovereign-class starship. Now, what does that mean? Oh, the camera's shaking all over. The Sovereign Project was one of the three main foray, foray, whatever, into the field of new defensive technologies initially intended for use against the Borg. The prototype, the USS Sovereign, was still in the design phase during the Battle of Wolf 359, which many of you guys already know what that is, and began its actual space trials in the year 2369. So, not for a while does this happen. Initial production of the Sovereign class began um, at the Utopia, Utopia Planitia shipyards around Mars, with the final, final thing being done at the San Francisco fleet yards in Earth, where it continues to this day which the day hasn't happened yet. Either way, the, the Sovereign class vessels are heavily armored and armed. The design philosophy for the Sovereign class was shaped by the discovery of the Borg. The Sovereign project attempted to push the envelope as far as possible when it came to computer power, shielding, armament, and systems capabilities. The Sovereign class vessel combines the creature comforts associated with the larger galaxy class vessel vessel and the tactical power of the new Prometheus class. Two forward and aft rapid fire torpedo launcher systems are coupled with 12 type 12 advanced phaser emitters. Again, all this stuff, if you don't like Star Trek stuff, don't bother watching this. Capable of de delivering, delivering crippling blows to enemy shields and armor. The only drawback to this is that it's a little bit slower. Um, the size of it makes it a wee bit micro-sized. Um, the Sovereign Project, it was born out of sheer, sheer necessity and the stark reality of the impending Borg invasion. As the reports and intelligence gathered by the Enterprise D were studied and applied, starkly came to the humbling conclusion that its Grand Fleet may be no match for the massive Borg cubes. While the threat was full of dark portent, portent whatever, Starfleet decided to tackle the problem behind closed doors. Several projects were born or modified due to the threat of the Borg, of impending Borg attacks. Projects Norway and Steamrunner were revamped in large part due to the Borg threat along with the birth of the now infamous Defiant and Prometheus projects. Now the Prometheus is actually kind of cool that I wish they would do one of those guys. Um, now... Let me let me kind of find some other stuff here. Oh wait, no, don't want to look at that. In in the time that we've seen the Enterprise E, it's appeared in First Contact, Insurrection, and the final Next Generation movie, Nemesis. Throughout those times, the Enterprise E has undergone at least one refit, which included four additional phaser arrays and five additional photon, photon torpedo tubes. Um, the number of decks was also increased by 5 to a no total of 29. The uh, sections include the deflector and control, blah, 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 blah. Um, the ship could be controlled by manual steering, so you could have a little joystick. And located in the bridge, blah, that was located in the bridge. Um, the Enterprise E also was the first Enterprise to be equipped with the emergency medical hologram. Yay. It also carried newer designed shuttlecrafts, as well as numerous other forms of transportation, including a warp-capable cap captain's yacht, the Ca Cousteau, Cousteau, I'm guessing it's Cousteau, and a special multi-purpose vehicle called the Argo. Now, 
that's enough for the general gist of things. I'm probably going to be doing more of these guys, so get used to them because I'm liking them. These are the detail on here. Now, one thing that I particularly don't like, as you can see, it's very speckly looking on the actual bridge or on the, the saucer section. Not so much on the bottom, a lot on the top. I really don't quite understand why they did that. But look at the detail that goes in this. Even on the actual nacelles. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Now a couple of highlighted features on here. One thing that I really like is, is the display stand is a ball joint thing. So you can position him any number of ways. And it stays pretty nice there. I'm, I'm actually really kind of impressed with that. Now the captain's yacht is on the bottom here. I'm going to zoom in and try and show this to you. That's the captain's yacht. And it's kind of hard to see, but right here and there are actually like the nacelle things. Those fold down. This detaches and then it flies away. So the captain can pretty much go wherever, oop, wherever he wants. The deflector dish. Oh, which you can't see. Deflector dish. Um, what else are highlighted features? Now, it does light up. There are lights and sounds with this guy. A couple problems that I have with it, though. If you look on the nacelles here, and I don't know if you can see these, these are actually kind of clear translucent, and you can kind of see things on the inside here. These don't light up. What actually lights up are the Bussard collectors. Now, what are Bussard collectors, you might ask? Bussard collectors typically collect hydrogen, which will fuel, help to replenish the fuel of the ship. They also can vent things such as plasma and other gases of the nature. So we saw uh, Riker do that in Insurrection, actually, venting from the Bussard Collector. He's, he used the ram scoop, this, otherwise known as the Bussard Collector, to pull in the, the, the bad gas stuff and then it vented out. Now, very nice. I really like. Now, for me, on my camera, that's backwards. I hope it's not going to be backwards in the video, but it says NCC 1701E USS Enterprise. These are all escape pods that are on there. Very nice looking ship. Very sleek. Very, very sleek. I really like this. I'm hoping I'm going to show everything that you guys want to see. Now, I'm going to try to minimize some of the lighting. That didn't do it. Okay, now it's much darker, but I want to do this because the bridge, which is located right here, when you push it, that will light up, the Bussard collectors will light up, and the, uh, whatever you call that, the deflector dish will also light up. So, let's go ahead and hit it once. One more time. There's several different sounds. That was, I think, being attacked. Ready phases and quantum torpedoes. That's actually Patrick Stewart's voice. Fire all weapons. So, as I said, the Bussard collectors light up, that flashes, and the bridge actually flashes. And it kind of does, it doesn't like nose diving very much. But overall, this is a beautiful ship. It really is very highly detailed. And I do highly recommend it. Now, to draw a comparison, I have the old Playmates version. It is the exact same length. I don't know if you can see that. Exact same length. These are noticeably different. This is a whole lot more cartoony looking almost uh, than this one. This one has a whole nicer feel. Of 
course, these have stickers, whereas these are not stickers. Those are actually painted onto it, which are very nice. All of the the lettering and such, which if you look on the back here, I'm going to try and show you that this is actually painted on, which is really nice. Um, big differences, though, are really kind of here in the back and such. Um, you can really see how it, how it, well, hopefully, you can see how the difference of it. This is completely not right. These are the impulse engines right here. That's not. So, if you're going to get these, obviously this one's probably a little bit more expensive. This one is much cheaper and um, noticeably, I don't have the things. But one thing is it had individual buttons that you could push to get the action sounds. As opposed to this one just has the one button that you push. And it go and all of it controls the light lights and sounds for all of them. But overall, this is a beautiful, beautiful display piece. If you are a fan of Star Trek, oh, and of course it does separate from the uh, the thing. Ready phases and quantum torpedoes. Fire all weapons. It's just really cool. Really, really cool, guys. I do recommend this thing. If you if you can find this thing, pick him up if you like Star Trek. Um, oops, that's a little too high. So until next time, guys, um, this was just a real quick video. I wanted to wish everybody a very happy and safe New Year tonight. I don't even know if this is going to be uploaded by then, but have a good time, guys. Be safe. Be fun. Enjoy yourself, but not too much, obviously. And until next time, this is Optobotomus. Take care.